today. Hello everyone, joining us tonight is Sister Malu Javier DC, the school president of the Sacred Heart College of Lucena City Incorporated. A great classmate and my favorite sitmate. Good evening, Sister Malu. Hello Ray, good evening. It's nice to have you and uh, that's what you said. If you find me a great classmate, all the more for me. Because it was a wonderful conversation and wonderful experience and the class will be you around. Okay, let's begin our conversation tonight. What learning lesson your school embraced from COVID-19 pandemic? What mechanisms were given spotlights? You know, Ray, there is a lot that we explored uh, and we did that as the situation would demand for it. So the learning for the past two years went also smoothly because we were just allowing ourselves to be moved by the spirit. Uh, we always ask the guidance on how we can be able to do it. The many modalities that we ventured on were the, for especially for the tertiary education, we have the so-called class sessions. If there are any subjects and uh, each subject the student will take, we are just having a student for a session, 14 encounters daily and one subject would end. Then the next 14 days is another subject on and on until all subjects of the semester was taken. But for our basic education, it was all on distance learning. As in, uh, we enrolled in the Google Classroom, the Google Suite with so many features. That's why the learning of the students were all exciting for them. How do you view face-to-face -face versus distance education? Do you think that both modalities showcase quality education? They do. I would like to believe that at the given circumstance, we have to be expert on any of the modalities. While face-to-face -face or in-person learning is a very a personal encounter, between a teacher and the students. But uh, I don't say that we can set aside the uh, distance learning from online because in this era of technology, we have to upgrade our students on the use of this technology. But after all, we can never say that uh, the pandemic is over. That's why all of us will uh, proceed into the in-person. At any time, COVID strikes us, there is always available modality waiting for our students for the learning to continue. As a school leader and administrator, what is your vision during the changing normal? And how do you facilitate your school mission with your mission partners? You know what, Ray? In whatever demand of the mission, we would always simply that uh, the mission goes on and uh, it's not only in this time of pandemic, but any circumstances for that matter. So, what is in there for that we do with my uh, mission partners? We are responsive to the time, to the point that we provide the training to our teachers, so that the best of the, of the services that we have to provide to the students are given to them. And in terms of the vision, naturally, we will never run out of uh, the vision. While the in-person learning, you know, because the vision of the school is to be able to make the students Christ-centered, to empower them, and they become leader directed with such leaders, not the same time advocates of persons who are poor. With all those uh, in our site, we see to it that we provide in a given circumstance. For most for Catholic education is the centrality of the life of Jesus in all that we do. That even in the delivery of our learning instruction, 
there is always business there. For after all, if you are not going to consider the centrality of life in the person of Jesus, then we might be derailed in the mission that we are doing. So if, and if we anchor our uh, programs and activities with the gospel values, with the uh, the challenge of the Philippine Catholic School standards because that is only what we use in the modality of learning because that defines what uh, excellent Catholic schools are and there are guidelines that we are using, the rubrics and at the same time that standards so that is uh, how we will deliver the services to our students how do you assess the readiness of your students returning back to school for in-person learning? What changes will the school implement during the changing normal? As to the assessment of the readiness, uh, when we had them during the Mass of the Holy Spirit, the excitement is ever present among our learners, among our students. So they are more than ready to the point that the challenge we pose ourselves in administration is to also equate the same enthusiasm of our workers. So what is it that we will do to be able to ascertain the health protocols? Now, there is the GMC, the Joint Program called the Circular, provided by the different views, uh, different agencies of the government to ensure the safety. And we strictly follow and implement them. What are they? Like, for example, the use of the face mask. And upon entrance, we take the body temperature so that the event that we can benefit. Uh, there is something that we determine in the student that we would rather advise the student to be home, to stay home, rather than to get in the country. So the body temperature, the hand the washing that we have to do, the sanitizing, social distancing, the markings that we put so that the flow of the students inside the couple still goes quickly. All this were done so that no case of COVID will happen inside the classroom. Mr. Malu Javier DC, thank you very much for your time. Well appreciated. Thank you too. How I wish I can have this uh, time with you again. The Philippines Today. I am Rayron Del Rosario. Catch us for our next episode only here in IPDCI News Channel. Thank you so much, Ray. My great last week. Oh,